Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mike, Black Rifle Coffee Company. As you know, I'm the owner of Philcraft Survival. I'm in Philcraft HQ today talking about concealed carry considerations and the importance of a good draw stroke. Let's just call it how to draw a pistol. So how to draw a pistol depends on where the pistol's at. One of the things I harp on in grip is the grip starts with the acquisition of grip on the pistol, depending on where it's located. So the reason that's important is because a lot of people draw from holsters, but maybe your pistol won't be in the holster. Maybe it would be in a center console, a glove box, your immerse, your purse, your nightstand. In this particular case, I'm gonna focus on the acquisition of pistol and the draw stroke from your appendix carry holster, which is what I recommend you carry it in. I have this handy dandy vest. This plaidger shirt that I'm wearing kind of drapes over my gun, but I could use this vest to my advantage as well. I could take this appendix carry holster that we carry and segment it over here so it's masked here so the draw stroke is faster on access. Those are considerations for concealment. Today, the focus is on how to draw this pistol the most efficiently and effectively um, the fastest way to ensure that I have proper alignment and speed and accuracy on target. I know that's a little wordy, but I'm just gonna give you the cheats. All right, the first thing I wanna consider is, as I move my hand to the pistol, let's not talk about how I got to it, but as I move my hand to the pistol, I wanna use the back of the rear sights to be a kind of a grip for my dominant hand thumb as I draw this pistol. So the, the reason I use my, my uh, right thumb on this is because the alternative is sticking my thumb behind the grip, which is difficult to attain. And if you're composed differently, um, that might be even more difficult. So as I draw the pistol, I'm gonna put my thumb on top of the rear sights to get a good grip as well, because that notch allows me quick access and like a tactile piece of this gun that's gonna allow me to draw it cleaner out of the holster. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure my middle finger is mated with the bottom of the trigger guard. Because what I don't wanna do is do this, where I have to fix my grip because I short stroked the grip in the bottom of the frame with my middle finger or my hand. If I have to do it like this, then what you would see is my hand would have to come up and then I'd have to reacquire the grip on the gun. It's not the end of the world, but we wanna train for the worst case scenario and set ourselves up for success. So as I'm here, I'm on the back of the rear sights. I'm butt made it up against with my middle finger. And so when I pull the gun, I'm clearing the space from the holster and my pants. And that's all you need to do. I see a lot of guys go all the way out and their elbow goes super high. As soon as this is clear, I could begin the movement from point A to point B, which is presentation on target. So as it clears, and I know I'm clear, I simply drop my elbow and it drives the gun in the direction of the target. Now what you see I had to do there in slow motion is as I clear it and drop my hand, as I'm moving this gun up, I need to rotate the thumb around the bottom of the uh, frame, the beaver tail of the frame, and then I could stick my support hand underneath it. So let me show you that in slow motion again with good acquisition of grip on the gun, pulling it, clearing it, dropping the elbow, and then rotating the hand across with the gun in position. That's super simple and easy to achieve. The reason that's important is because if I have this as my shooting solution with gaps, as the gun muzzle flips on my hand, it's gonna settle in a different location each and every time, and that's a bad grip practice, okay? So I'm gonna do it again at, let's just do it at combat speed. Uh, again, not focused on the draping of the pistol, more so I've isolated the drawing of the pistol. So I'm here, I could do it in slow motion, get until I'm efficient, and then I could practice some uh, live uh, versions of this. Good. Hands are set up, nice and tight, good support hand, and then I'll draw it back. I do encourage you whenever you're doing this training, I'm using a simunitions pistol. I encourage you to use your pistol dry, obviously. This pistol, uh, which is a simunitions version of it, um, something that's safe in a safe environment. But as I draw the pistol and as I bring it back, my finger is indexed on the side of the frame, not floating the trigger guard. 
This in a flinch response would be bad because you'd break that shot even if um, slightly neglectful and you're not paying attention as you go to stick it in your holster. If you're floating this, it could smash that trigger. Always index your finger on the frame of the gun right here. And I always look at my holster as I'm putting it away. Some people are like, why do you gotta look at your holster? Well, one, because I'm not trying to, try to impress anybody by putting my gun away into a holster after the gunfight because the fight's no longer there. If you're putting the pistol away, uh, you have an elevated level of stress. You're coming off that stress. You need to look at your holster and put it away. Oh, and by the way, most gunfights in self-defense happen at night. And so just willy-nilly with adrenaline uh, coursing through your veins, trying to smash it in the holster, the gunfight's over. Uh, don't be such in a rush to put it away. And if you are, look at your holster, index your finger and put it away. I'll do it one more time live for this situation. Good, good. And what I'm gonna do is after I focus on isolating, rehearsing and repeating the right answer, then I'll work on the drape scenarios. I'll drape my shirt, I'll drape my vest, I'll put it in my bag. The importance is isolating, rehearsing, and then repeating what right looks like. So I'll do some live runs for you. So for the importance of developing good habits, I never wanna set a term agreement for how many times I wanna shoot this target. And I also don't want to snap the gun off target and race it back to the holster in a rep. I wanna focus on doing it right, right every time, thinking through the problem like it is in reality, making decisions, and then putting it away when I decide to. This isn't a rep. This is a decision-making process. So here we go. One more time. I'm asking myself right now, what questions would I be asking? Is he neutralized? Where's my family and friends? Someone call 911, getting a little cognitive, and then I'm putting it away. I hope that helped. There's a lot of focus and training on smashing things together, but a lot of times we have to break down and isolate the specific ta technical tasks that we wanna focus our efforts on, and that's the best way to practice. When you're ready, culminate it, especially with stress, but until then, focus on isolating the basics. Till next time, stay alert, stay alive.